Welcome back, my friends, to Card Sharks. We were able to pick up off of the same save from the demo that we played way back at the Steam Next Fest celebration. I can't believe the game has finally released. I've been looking forward to this game for a very long time. Is it the most unique game to release in 2022? A game all about cheating at cards. It has had me hooked ever since I first saw it. Here we are back at the camp of the Cascarots. If you want to be able to go back and see how we got here, I have built up the playlist and the old demo video is now incorporated into the let's play we're going to be continuing right from where we were here the magician at the gypsy camp i was not expecting mcgregor to be after us so quickly the baroness i'm sure they are well it had its share of mishaps but we did survive baroness you are here my butterfly We are fine now, but it was a near thing. I will try. I will try my best. So the Baroness has had ties to the Gypsy camp all along. Uh, yes. That seems to be the way that he likes to play. What? What? I... what? <laughs> okay. Okay. How is Ireno here and betting with so much money in our games with the Baroness? doesn't know everything. We have a little pocket mirror. Something to be able to spy friends' cards or some other trick. Hello there, lad. I have good news. The magician asked about Theodore's whereabouts. He's hiding in Corsica. Corsica. That is off the coast of Italy, I believe. I don't really like the idea of visiting that god for a second landy there, but if we want to know the truth about the 12 bottles of milk, this is our next stop. But before we go, a couple of things. Firstly, we need to share our gains with the magician. Yes, we have quite a purse built up. I will give what I can, you should too. Uh, and one more thing. The magician mentioned he had some kind of challenge for you. You should speak with him. Interesting. Well... Thank you for the hand mirror. I wish that we had a little bit more explanation, Baroness. Baroness, the evening night is so enchanting. Shall we walk? <laughs> he doesn't... Does he not know it's Ireno? Hello, magician. The harvest was incredible. What can we spare? Well, we are not to be outdone. So, we'll run up our tally to be similar to the gambler. And there we are. I just love how much the, the portraits change, even if a tiny cha um, alteration in the donation is made. There we are. We appreciate it. And how exactly are we going to change the world? I would like to play a game. I improve my dexterity. We get to learn the, the card throwing. Classic play for, uh, for all card magicians. Ah, interesting. So you wind it up. And then if you're able to hit the sweet spot... You have to execute the, uh, the attack. Oh, I'm not very good at this. <laughs> I would like to keep practicing for a little bit. <laughs> okay, we've thrown the entire deck. I'm going to be honest. Um, this is probably my worst game. Uh, we're, we're just going to leave it at that.
card in a hat. May we never have to use this trick. Shall we finish up here now, or would you like to carry on with the magician? Let us finish up. Good. We have added three new locations to our potential travels. The barn, the baths, and then the ship. The ship, I believe, is going to be um, central to being able to make it over to Corsica. This is Corsica. To advance the story, let's head on over here. We have to gamble our way aboard. Corsica, a pitiful place. No majesty to be had at all. Only mountains, hills, and guts. Nevertheless, it is where we are bound if we are to find Theodore. To cross to a, a Jaco? We need to get a special kind of vessel. The, the discreet kind, if you catch my meaning. I know just the captain to ferry us there. He happens to be a gambler too. Oh, of course, one of your camp like friends. You must have met a few sailors in Pau. How were they? Um, they were fairly friendly. Bah, I find that to be hard to believe, lad. You wouldn't say boo to a goose, let alone a boat full of ruffians. So, you'll be glad to hear we'll be using a very subtle strategy this time. You will start with a new technique called Shiner Glimpse. Simply use a reflective surface to peek at the underside of our opponent's cards as you deal. Ah, is this the time where we are going to use our our hand mirror? You had a bit of a ready. Narrows and sea sickness are not good bedfellows. <laughs> Certainly not. Marcellus France, later that day. What? How much? Are you out of your mind? 450 livres? To go to Corsica? Ah, <sighs> my friend and I value discretion at its just price. Maybe you should too, Captain. Or would you prefer me to call you by your real name? Revenue de Luçon? Hmm, blackmail? I wonder what the good folk of Marseille would say if they knew that a pirate parades around the port as a merchant. The pirates of the Mediterranean. I do like this turn of events. I'm sure that our friend the gambler has played his friend right into this position. Okay, let's not press too much early. That raises a lot more suspicion than if you press later on. So we will place our bet. We actually cannot afford fair. The trick here is that we have the, um, the pipe, the tobacco case, which is a reflective surface, specially polished just for this. And as long as we are dealing, we can pass our opponent's cards, King of Hearts across it to be able to see exactly what they are. Um, come on, deal to me. We can see exactly what they are to be able to then signal to our friend. King of Hearts is still the top, but the the longer that we take to be able to get a look, the more suspicious he is obviously going to be. I was kind of hoping for maybe an ace to be able to signal. And the dealing is quite slow, but he's not too suspicious as long as we keep things moving at an even pace. We need to be able to signal hearts. And now King is deep to the table as we play our card out. Our friend now has the information to be able to win the round and 20 livres go into our pockets. Eh bien, Capitan? Is that how you boarded English ships in the Caribbean by offering them aces? Hmm. <laughs> oh, the banter. So, uh, we want to be able to think a little bit about how the bets are going to play out. It's going to be 20 and then 40, which means we'll pull 60 out of his pocket. But if we bump up to 30 now, the next one will be 60. And then he won't be able to afford 60. So we have to leave it at 20 right now. And then we can press in the final round to be able to pull a little bit more out of his purse. Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. Is It's because we're on board ship. Things are shifting. <laughs> Uh, it's incredible. I didn't realize that we were already on board the uh, the boat. That just makes things very interesting. I am extremely worried that it's going to slip away entirely, but it's kind of fun. Jack of um, spades. Jack of spades. I never thought of the logistics of trying to play a card game on board a table that moves. But here we are. And it is still Jack of spades is the winner. We deal out five cards to everybody. Uh, king of diamonds that trumps the previous top cards. We're going to have to signal king of diamonds. And again, kings. There we go. Excellent victory for ourselves. What bad luck you have tonight, Captain. Aha. 
and here is where we press the bet. Now, I don't want to go too far because the suspicion is going up and I have not been the most adept dealer. What? Oh, what? What has happened? Oh my goodness. Uh, okay. So it might not even be on the table as I am dealing. There we go. No? What am I gonna do? I could just deal it, but I could also check. Oh, I'm glad I checked. King of Diamonds. Oh. What are the odds that something beats King of Diamonds? Do I go for a quick deal or do I go for a quick check? Yeah, it's not an ace. King of Diamonds. Okay, now this is getting interesting. This is getting very interesting. Uh, that is also... No, it's a jack. As long as it's not an ace, we just signal King of Diamonds because if the suits are tied in value, then um, our friend does not need any extra information. Didn't he already have a King of Diamonds? I believe we've... Oh, no, no, no. It is so close. Are we able to get away with it? I must be terrible at this. Thank you, Captain. Our lips are sealed. We will choose our captains now. Ah. Okay, we barely got away with that one. Part of it was probably because we pressed the bet there at the very end. Quite a bit. Theodore will be a difficult fish to catch. He is a fake count, but a real bandit. A Corsican one too, as ah, they have a terrible reputation. Tell me, how do you picture a bandit? Um, exactly, he will be expected. He will expect to be cheated. We need a simple approach, dumb but effective. In this time, I show you the crooked card technique. You will simply bend a few cards so I can cut to them, giving the best cards to me and the worst to our opponent. Uh, when it is your turn to play, you need to mark your cards by discreetly bending them against the table. Hey, look, we are here. Let's root out this Theodore. The Cove of King Theodore between Calvi and Galera Corsica. We are here to meet Theodore. A count yesterday, a king today. Theodore is springing up the social ladder. I mean, as long as you label your, your grounds a kingdom. I played enough Crusader Kings to be able to promote. <laughs> Just create the title. Neither your majesty, we are friends of Henri de Almaritz. Still decrepit. Uh, indeed, incurably so. Your Majesty is perspicacious. Yes, we know about 12 bottles of milk, but not enough of it, I'm afraid. Soapy Smith, okay. <laughs> Daddy, just say the word and I shall strike. <laughs> what is this? Sure, Dad. Should we play your secret at cards instead? I think your son has had too much to drink. Everybody loves a good game of cards. Uh, we should join the table ourselves. How much do we like to bet? Start out low while we get the hang of our trick. So the trick here is that we are purposefully bending cards to be able to mark their value for future rounds. And as long as they are bent, uh, then we will be able to access them through manipulating how we cut the deck. So low cards are bent one direction, high cards are bent another direction, and that way uh, they can be picked up by... Now, we missed! They can be picked up in this shuffle. So the idea there is that as we cut, we are able to pocket the high card with the way that it is bent. Um, and then through this next manipulation, we'll be able to grab the low card to send across to our opponent. But if not everything comes together, I believe that we fail here. So here we need to drop the shuffle and then mark it to at least go across in jog and then quickly shuffle to get out of here. I don't know if we're going to be able to succeed with the random card going to our companion. Yeah, round is lost. We pulled half the trick together, but we were not able to pocket the, uh, what was it, the queen that we had marked before. I'm not, I don't want to press his suspicion anymore because I would like to be able to take my time with the shuffle to make sure that things come together. Okay, king. We mark this. A clean mark. 
And then we'll show 8 here. Low card to try and guarantee to play to our opponent. Which was at least the part of the trick that we were able to do before. And got it. Okay, so now we are pocketing the king. The round is played out. And we have the king now to be able to palm on top of the deck. Our opponent is cutting, and because the low card was folded, it is a subliminal message to try and force him to have it. Okay, making sure that we are aligning these correctly. I don't know how accurate this really is. I suppose you can always try it at home. Try crimping a card with a deck that you don't care about and see how easy it is or how often you cut directly to that card. Huzzah! Mm, he is not giving up his secret lightly. Shall we press any harder? We could push a little bit. I believe that if he's going to run out of money to be able to fund the following bet, then he is going to give up his secret. Um, so this is where this is where we press. King once again, marked for our ally. And these cards, this deck is just done. <laughs> Though, uh, hopefully everybody is so blithering drunk as they usually are that they don't mind. But yeah, this deck is never seeing use again. Okay, this is the, this is the rough one. Oh, no! Okay, we're just shuffling to get out of this, and we're gonna have to pull it. Ah, oh, we're losing so much. And his suspicion keeps going higher the more often that we are pulling this. Uh, I think that we just leave it. We don't press in case things go wrong yet again. Oh, I'm not a fan of this trick. Just because the QTE, I don't know, something about it is throwing me off. It feels aggressive in the timing. To be able to pocket it and then of course if you just miss that single part of the trick um it's all wrong so here we go most important part oh thank goodness oh and because we did it quickly his suspicion actually went back oh because of the it was perfect timing okay perfect timing actually reduces his suspicion we are so quick and agile after failing <laughs> repeatedly but i like the tricks more where if you mess up or it's taking you a long time, it's just slow. Like here, I can be slow, but still basically fix mistakes that I make. Um, whereas that, if you just miss the QTE, the whole trick is off. We're able to recoup some of our losses. He is out of the game. We are listening. I don't have to tell you anything. You gave your word. <laughs> What a king you make. King of goats, donkeys, and juniper. I wonder which one enjoys your regal caress at night. Hmm. I think that we have pressed him too far. <laughs> this prince. What? Did he actually stab him or did he just... Like... Smack him to the solar plexus. No, wait. I am unarmed. I do not fight with swords. Um, but we can. Oh, no. Is this the end of our character yet again? He will demand the honor of the duel. All right. Ooh. Okay, we have some uh, some moves. Oh, we're down. There was no QTE. It's we just go down. Stop! Can't you see the foolish boy has learned his lesson? A real nobleman would lower his sword and let the hot-headed child off with a warning. The hot-headed child had nothing to do with angering the king. I think the gambler just full-on Bugs Bunny the king at that point. 
But there we are, the bandit's den. Unavailable. What did we learn? We return to the continent. A disaster. Theodore poses as a king, but in reality is a bandit with no honor. I was forced to duel against him and lost. Felt like Comte's fighting dog. Humiliating. Uh, the Comte is sulking, but claims he is planning our next steps. I fear he is just as lost as I feel. Well, it seems now we have a couple different locations we could visit where we're going to at least be able to increase our coin purse as we try and figure out how we're going to be able to advance the story as the trail seems to have gone cold. If anything interesting happens, I'll make sure it's in the video, but otherwise uh, we'll make a cut to where we start actually advancing the story once again. Sarah, could we join you at this table? Charles Legan. I don't know my French history well enough. Is this another famous historical figure? Come to Saint Germain. I did Nubel on the road and my son, Eugene. Uh, interesting. He has named us. Fantastic. Excuse me, he is not very talkative. Let us play. So, here at the high rollers table at the bath. The hook is that the gentleman expects to be able to cut himself, which uh, eliminates most of our tricks up to this point. So we have to be able to manipulate the deck to be in a position. Uh, now I need to mark it, lock it, where he is going to cut, but we are still able to load the hand for our companion. So here we are riffling through the deck to be able to secure aces to go to our friend's hand. One thing is that we have to... Um, set up the full hand and remember to be able to count out okay mark it this is going to him lock that in riffle back so now we have a set stack and now we do a false shuffle where we're able to preserve the stack of cards that we have manipulated to the very top to be the first hand so then we do our next portion of the shuffle with an in jogged card and then <laughs> we crimp the card to influence his cut to be able to be on the top. This feels like a very risky kind of gamble, uh, but we were able to win the round, so there we are. Uh, there are some guards, the blue coats. Colonel Gabriel. Oh no. Maitri Legon, my apologies. Ah, we have made an excellent ally here. Maitre? The king's prosecutor at the Toulouse Parlement. Oh my goodness. <laughs> We're gonna have to play cards with the guy that we cheated at the very beginning of the game. Oh no. We're locked into this game of cards. Can we, uh... I would like to leave. I would not like to sit down. Well, I have proven to be very slow at this trick, so I don't think I really want to press the bet. At least not very much. At least not very much. Pressing it up to 10 here, uh, up to 50. By 10, up to 50 with the way that it will double next round is actually going to go quite well for us. And so now we have to remember that we have an extra player at the table throwing um, quite the wrinkle into our shuffle here. So then we need to get two losers in place. We begin riffling back through, find our second ace so that we have the pair of aces to be able to send across to our friend the gambler. Mark, lock, okay. Their suspicion is increasing incredibly quickly. And now we want to be able to keep on shuffling nicely. Oh no, did we lose? We lost half the hand. Ah. Oh. Hopefully if he wins, then his suspicion goes back down, so we're able to pull it off on the final hand that's going to be the high stakes battle. I was worried because the very first time that I saw the shuffle go... Ooh, we see the pipe. Colonel 1. I can... Ah ha ha! Okay, so this is where we we're using the card throw from before. Right now, everything is paused. So we learned how to be able to throw cards. We'll be able to incriminate him as a cheat himself. If I can land the toss to put the card under his chair. Oh, no. Okay. The, the controls here are incredibly finicky, and I hate them. 
Oh, I missed. No. I was agonizing over it because I didn't have a time limit and I still missed. Let's bet 80 and try and be able to recoup our losses. I don't want to press any because our suspicion is quite high. We have ended up in a dangerous situation here. We are now uh, riffling through. We are on the clock for this, so uh, we need to be clever. And where are my aces? There's one. Okay, lock that in. Bring it across. Um, pick up two losers. Bring those across to be able to stack the deck. Now we do have marked any aces that we were able to see before, but perhaps spun past. So say this one. One more. Lock that in. Oh, okay, okay. Now we have to be able to make sure that this shuffle goes well. Uh, the shuffle was quite the failure. I don't understand the mechanics of the shuffle. It felt like the shuffle was even. And he is raking it in. Oh no. But we can still set up the kernel. It does mean that the loss gives us this opportunity, which is perhaps more important. Uh, from all the livre. Okay, 160. Yes, sir. I will play quite happily. You're taking me for everything I am worth. Your suspicion is quite high. I don't know if I am fast enough to be able to accomplish what I must do. There's one and one. And lock that. And two losers. And lock that. Pair of aces, please. Where are my aces? Oh my goodness. There it is. Ah, oh, they cheated. I saw them. Yes, arrest us. Do you have a warrant? He's the prosecutor. <laughs> the police talking to the lawyer. We are innocent. Ah. Oh. But we were able to land the card. Our saving grace for all our bumbling around this trick, we were able to land the card under the colonel. Mitra Lagan, that is precisely what we are saying. How dare you? Well... The proof is in the ace placed in your chair. Oh, is that why it was so hard to find the aces? I tossed an ace into his chair. That's, I only had three aces left in the deck and then I couldn't find it so we got caught. Oh, we lost so much money, but we have weaseled out. We lost so much money. But we're alive. Yikes. 125 livres to our name. We really need to be able to recoup. Off to the artist's workshop. You can put your book away, lads. It's enough spelling practice for one journey. Time for a different sort of education. You have strong opinions on Versailles? Uh, no, I don't really care. Good, because I have plenty of thoughts on the place. Versailles is a machine that lures the best minds of our generation before breaking them and spitting them out. Remember how the old musketeer mentioned a woman named Sophie de Aubigny? She was one of its victims. Sophie was the mother of a muse of Clement Bellet, a painter a la mode. It wasn't to last. Belle's career ended the moment Sophie attracted the attention of Louis XV. We are going to visit Bill's workshop in Lyon. He can probably tell us more about Sophie's fate. How should we proceed? Uh, let us proceed confidently. Agreed. We will use a flurry of manipulations to convince the artist we couldn't possibly be cheating. You will stack the cards as you gather them and we will keep that stack through a shuffle and a cut. Doesn't sound too bad. Are you excited to meet Clement and see his studio? I suppose so. I've seen your sketches, you have some talent. However, we must focus on the matter at hand, Sufi's whereabouts. We haven't time for a lesson on color theory, so let me do the talking. <laughs> of course, you know what I mean. Lyon, France, later that day. I hope we won't have to wait for Maitre Belle too long. Look at this, our painter didn't stay idle. Interesting. Is he going to be able to find some clues to Sophie within the, the paintings? The, te the technique is French. The subject, Dutch. The taste, 
Nah, the taste is American. That woman reminds me of Deborah, Deborah Churchill. Yes, that is her, no doubt. I recognize the pout. The niece of Henri de Amirt here. That's too much of a coincidence. Ah, is she going to be a more important character? Let's try across the room. What is he working on right now? A paintbrush. That gives me an idea. What are you waiting for? Quick, take it. Good man. I'm not sure what we are going to do with this. Though if we have a, a trick where we paint a new value on a card, perhaps? What do we have here? It looks like guard players. Are they cheating? Ah, here comes Clement. Hopefully we found any of the clues that we needed to out of the paintings. We got the paintbrush. Uh, Clement is deeply in debt, trying to keep the studio open. You are mistaken, Mr. Quentin sent us to give you another chance to win back your debt. Who knows, Mr. Quentin could owe you money at the end of this game. Let's play and make it a reality. Indeed. Okay, I would not like to bet too much. Um... <laughs> We've already proven ourselves to be very inadequate at this game. We need to be able to stack the shuffle here. Oh, this is all face cards. Fantastic. Is the timer even running at all right now? It does not appear to be. We can grab here to load it. Oh, it's playing very slowly. Okay, so we have our stack. Now we are doing the false riffle, which can incur a lot of suspicion very quickly. So we need to be able to... Just press things a little bit, keep the stack preserved on top here, and now do our false cut and follow the pattern here. A little bit of fancy finger work to show that we did not actually change the position of the deck, and we have our first winnings. You have no luck, but you certainly have a lot of talent, Mr. Bell. <laughs> I particularly like this painting. Is that Sophie de Abigny, your famous muse? It is her sister, Deborah. Her sister! I had no idea. Not many people know their story. Oh, but I would love to hear more of this story. Let us keep it low for now. Fully understanding that we could lose any of these with uh, my dramatic incompetence. We'll be able to load here. Load here. And this puts us with the queen to the center. Yes, I like this quite a bit. Jack-Jack queen, winning hand. Out of what is preserved here. Now for the shuffle. Mix in just a little bit. And the top is preserved. Gained a lot of suspicion, but that is okay. Oh good, one of the accomplishable ones. Sometimes they make you cross the stick through the center, and that is so finicky, at least on the Steam controller that I am using, that I fail 9 out of 10 for all my practice. That was unexpected, I have won again! You feigned surprise rather well. Ah, Clement is on to us. I've heard Sophie left the court. Where did she go? Nobody really knows. We're up to 80. I like that quite a bit. We have to be able to win. I don't know if I want to press, because in the case where we lose and then play the following round, um, I don't know if we'll have enough suspicion to be able to continue the game. So we load in the queen. Oh, this is like a beautiful set. We go queen, jack, king. Winning cards all. Very easy to be able to grab quickly. Play into the shuffle here. Play things a little slow to make sure that we are correct. We have the suspicion to be able to burn. There we are. It feels like its suspicion jumps. And it's hard for me to understand what is what is making it jump. But here we are. He is at the end of his patience. And we have won a pretty pot. Thank you, Maitre Bear. That was a very pleasant game. Yes. How so? I thought her affair with the king was just a passing fling. Oh, and then she disappeared. We must find Sophie. 
We already knew about the secret marriage. And there, Artist Workshop is completed. We have a new position, the hospice. Yes, this is where we will be able to meet the sister, Deborah. Oh, but we could also go back to the baths. Ah, fascinating. Well, we are certainly on the trail of the sister. I feel like we pursue this trail while the trail is hot. So, Armitsu was present when Sophie Dabigny disappeared. I never suspected a man so stiff of limb could be so sneaky. And I don't even get me started on his niece, Deborah. Can you believe we let Sophie's very own sister sleep under our nose? Alright, now we have multiple options here. Let's see, Sophie. Clement Bear reveals that Sophie was the secret wife of Louis XV. She was much more than a passing mistress. We need to learn what happened to her. Anything else? Yes, the sister. Of course, Deborah isn't really related to the old musketeer, and I doubt she empties the old fool's bedpan out of the goodness of her heart. So what is she doing? Sophie must be the linking factor here. Anything else? The sister must know of Sophie's location, or at least give us a hint along our trail. It is a long way back to Bergarak. Let me teach you a new strategy whilst we travel. Bergarak, France. Later that day. Ah, Deborah, I am surprised. You don't have another decrepit uncle to look after? Ah, let us hope he doesn't crumble on the way. She's a gold digger. We know who you are, Miss Debigny. We want to know everything about Sophie. Ah, but she wants to play first. She is hooked on the cards just as much as everybody else in this crumbling country. So here we must rifle through the deck, this portion of the trick we have already seen. Starting on the ace, very fortunate for us. Now we just need to rifle through to be able to find another. Continue to stack, drop, and we've made it in. Now we have a different version of the false shuffle where we just mess with the bottom set of the cards and then we throw the top back on without it being mixed up. So more sleight of hand and then our false cut yet again. And we know that uh, Deborah's peculiarity is that she wants things, the deck to be very neat and well cut. So we are able to play to her fancy while manipulating our sleight of hand. For the same reason I came the first time, you know something about the 12 bottles of milk. You're Sophia's sister. We talked to Clement Bell. I do not know what you tried to accomplish here, but you must know what the old musketeer was about to reveal to us. Ah, uh, yes, we've not finished the game yet. Shall we press her a little? Then the next bet would be up to 60, so no. To be able to take her for as much money as possible, uh, we need to leave it here. Find the ace. Oh, we're rifling through the whole deck. Okay, lock this in. And find the next one. Rifle through to where we were. Oh, we hit it. There we go. We actually skipped one of them there. <laughs> Mess with the bottom portion of the deck, finalize, drop the top on, false cut. Follow the pattern, and well done. She doesn't suspect a thing. So, will you tell us or shall we force you? I have not finished. Or are you afraid of losing? I fear nothing when it comes to cards. Let's press a little here. I have a feeling that her rich benefactor is about to appear and fuel her purse to extend our game. And we have an ace that we found right here. Lock him in. Ah, good. We're getting all the easy cuts to be able to manipulate. Another hundred livres into the gambler's pockets. That is enough. Tell us about Sophie. Where is she? Who? Julie d'Abigny? We've killed two horses on the way, but we are finally here. I <laughs> oh, thank God. I didn't know I could delay them much longer. Cavalier de St. George's, good day to you, my princess, my prince. Okay, so these are two brand new characters. You are the Cavalier de St. George's. 
This man is the most skilled sword fighter in France. We need to run. We've been trapped. Don't go. So Julie is the mother? Face your destiny. Why did you visit the painter? Why are you inquiring after my daughter, Sophie? You are Julie d'Abigny, Sophie's mother? So we have the whole family here. Where is Sophie? We need to talk to her. Disappeared 20 years ago. That's why I sent Deborah here. To be able to find the her whereabouts from the musketeer. Ah, she did not. She's saying that she did not get the information. We've learned that Sophie secretly married the king 20 years ago. The mother didn't even know this? Julie. Yes, you need to talk to Theodore. We tried, but he's an uncivilized cockroach. He will only talk at the point of his sword. Mm, I can help with that. Well, perhaps it is time for round two. Oh dear. Our stance is not exactly instilling confidence in me. Uh, okay, I'm expecting some QTEs here. Oh god. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hi. Low. Teach the boy how to attack. Uh, well, we did it. I'm not sure exactly what I'm doing. Gaining the upper hand is all a matter of observation. Okay, so we have to learn their pattern of attack, and then we match. And then after we have a match to be able to defend, we will be able to attack. Strike in a way your opponent is not expecting. So we play the pattern and then we deviate to be able to win. Yikes. Low. High. Low. Middle. Low. Low. High. Middle. You have fire in you, but don't get so worked up you forget how to defend yourself. What did I do wrong? All the nuns are watching. So does it just mean that I can't go high? I, maybe I've been misreading this whole thing. On guy. This is the one. Middle. Low. Middle. High. Middle. Middle. Low. Middle. High. Low. Excellent. Ah, so we have read it. You get the pattern that you must imitate, and then you have the one direction that you cannot succeed, and you can pick either of the other two. It is settled then. We will join forces for now. And Georges is going to accompany us. Well, why doesn't he just fight for us? Ah. Yes. Go another round. Show me what you got. High, middle, low, high. And again. Ah. With grace and poise. Excellent form, boy. Again. I believe that we are satisfied. So be it, let us depart. The duel. We are becoming quite the gentleman, adept at all manner of the high society. Time to return to the bandit's den. Let us face it, lad. Last time we visited His Majesty, we were woefully unprepared. There are still a few more hours left before we reach our destination. I wonder how we will pass the time. <laughs> Let me guess. I'm not sure we will have the occasion to play cards this time. But if we do, I fully intend to bring Theodore down with Ponche. Pon did I say pon Panache! <laughs> For that purpose, we will use a strategy designed to give me an extremely strong hand. The following technique calls for an expert blend of subtlety and precision. We'll start with a new technique, the bottom drag. Not to be confused with top drag. The Cove of King Theodore between Calvi and Galeria, Corsica. We have made our glorious return to his majesty. Oh no. That was one of his guards, or is that actually his son? Where is the king of Corsica? Ah, the king. Uh... Hmm. 
On guard. Well, are you not going to fight him? All right, Cavalier. I suppose so. The rematch is upon us. My sword is purely ornamental. You are the one who knows how to use it. <laughs> oh no. On guard, your majesty. See what you have this day. Low, middle, high. Low, middle, high. We have matched his play. What sport? We've come a long way, your majesty. High, low, middle, low. High, low, middle, low. Now we must seize our opportunity to be able to attack. High, low, low. Middle, middle. High, low, low, middle. Back to low. And the opportunity is ours. You have improved, young man. It is time, Theodore. We are seated for thirst of your barbaric displays of violence. It is time to tell us about the 12 bottles of milk. And be careful. We have heard much already. We will know if you lie to us. He was summoned by the king for a secret visit. A visit to the 12 bottles of milk. That is where he saw and heard. We are this way. Oh, poor Sophie. He announces for the king. Here is Luis. Sophie. Oh, has she actually died? The child. The prince. What? What? Does this make sense? But that also means... Oh. <laughs> Me? Yes! You! You are the key! He would be... The crown prince of all of France? The baby... The king's legitimate child. You seem quite certain. Oh, I have my reasons. Oh, incredible. Alright, so Cavalier is going to leave. To know that the sister is dead. We will be on our way to Paris. We shall meet you there. Farewell, monsieur. Uh, uh, why not? We have time to work on our plans later. Of course, with this revelation that we are the crown prince of France. Yeah, a country on the verge of revolution. We will gamble away at cards with the king of Corsica. Ah, uh, sure. After all, we practiced a new trick. It's time to show it off. This barbarian who killed his own son. We'll play a little conservatively conservatively at first. So here we are trying to uh, in-jog valuable cards of any kind, just as quickly as we come to them. Casually pawing through the deck here. Uh, hit me with the king. And another king. Fantastic. So now because all of these cards are in-jogged, we're able to cut them off and then drop the deck down. But we leave all the valuable cards in a stack at the very bottom. So now... We drop in one stack. We can do a pincer shuffle, pulling off cards from the top and bottom. And then we're able to manipulate the deck here to give our companion the winning hand that dreams are made of. Now we in jog this, complete the shuffle as quickly as possible so as not to incur too much suspicion. And oh, what a hand this is going to be. Now we do our false cut. And just to be able to avoid extra suspicion, we allow our friend to cut, but then... Oh, I missed it. 
we effectively undo his cut with a little bit of flourish uh, and hope that he does not realize that we, well, as he cut, we just replace the deck in the exact same order. Propriety should compel you to let the king win. Your majesty, we cannot expect us to do that. That would be cheating. <laughs> yes, another round. Uh, we're up to 40. Do we want to press to 50? Then the next round would be at 100. Or we can play 40, 80, and then beyond that. Ah, suspicion is increasing. But let's play up to 50. I believe that I can manipulate the trick a little bit faster now. If I am not fully talking through it. We're looking for our high cards. Queen. Come on, Jack. One more. Ace. I love Ace. Drop them off. Loads the deck from the bottom up. Shuffle. Pincer. Mark. Pincer. Mark. Got to make sure that my rhythm is correct. But there it is. Jog it and finish the shuffle. Quickly, quickly. Excellent. Okay, we're able to putting it up. Now let's not miss on the misdirection. Excellent. All right. I do think that we have enough suspicion to be able to pull another round out of him. Pardon? <laughs> ah, we've seen you kill enough people, your majesty, that you are not to be trifled with. I would like to have the full double bar of suspicion here. 80 livre is uh, no laughing matter. Even for a gambling gypsy champion, crown prince of France such as myself. What could this mean, being the crown prince on the eve of revolution? I feel like this just puts us in more danger than we would be otherwise. We'll mark our cards. Oh no! I've messed the entire trick up from the beginning. Incredible. Just get me out of here. Just get me out. I don't know why I tried to continue. You should just get out. As soon as you make a single mistake, it's over. It's over. It's not that far off, but it is over. You're not able to win with any failures. Thankfully, the loss will reset his suspicion a little, and then we should be able to make back all of these losses. As soon as I start pondering the meanings of the story revelations is where we uh, begin to falter. Yes, yeah, so let us play again. So up to 160, I don't want the press. This time, no mistake. Oh my gosh. We're filling the table with the bets. So much is on the field. King, king. I would love if the twist here in the final chapters is that we start setting up some tricks where we are able to win. We have to then pilot the hands, but I don't suspect that that will ever happen. It seems like our partner, the gambler, is... Okay, drop it. There we go. Now we're able to start setting the deck. Make sure I'm using the correct commands in the correct order. Finding my routine. Getting them all in place. Et voila. Jog it. Finish the shuffle. Get me out of here. <laughs> yeah, excellent. Now we cut, we offer the deck to be cut by our compatriot, his majesty. Misdirect the reset. And we should be able to come away with all of the winnings. Oh, thank goodness. Bang. That's the sound of your luck falling down a well. <laughs> oh no. We leave Corsica greatly enriched. Chapter 3, The Betrayal. Faith, I am no such fool. Everyone for himself in this desert of selfishness, which is called life. Marie Sandal in Le Rogue et Le Noir. At the chapter break here, we will cut the episode. Leave a like and subscribe if you have been enjoying the Let's Play. Stay tuned for the next episode. It'll be coming out very soon. Until next time, thank you guys for watching and have a good one.